Mavs fans, what's going on? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. Today, I want to break down four trade targets for the Dallas Mavericks before the NBA trade deadline. And the place that I'm getting these from are the 10 targets that the Dallas Morning News put out for the Mavs. And this is coming from Callie Kaplan. She put out 10 names. And here are the 10 names. We're only breaking down four today in this video, but the 10 are Andre Godala, who we know all about. We talk about him regularly on this show. Bogdan Bogdanovich, which if you guys do watch regularly, you know that's my dream target for the Dallas Mavericks. Andre Drummond of the Detroit Pistons. Of course, it's just separating and dividing all of Mavs Twitter over if you want him or not. Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm kind of out on him personally with that contract, his injury history, and his age. And then Robert Covington was another name who I would love on this team of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, Four of the five that we're going to talk about here today, here's the other five in that list. J.J. Redick of the New Orleans Pelicans, Marcus Morris of the Knicks, Evan Fournier of the Orlando Magic, DeMar DeRozan of the Spurs, and the one I'm not going to talk about today is Danilo Gallinari of the Thunder because I've talked about him enough on this show. You know that he would be a perfect fit here if the Mavs could pull it off. Now, before I get into breaking down those four players, I want to remind you to go to Bet DSI, our ad partners here at chat sports type in that promo code nba120 when you go to chatsports.com slash bet and hey you know the dallas mavericks play tonight right against the sacramento kings and it could be at this time when i'm filming this we don't know but chris porzingis could be back and the Mavs are just three and a half point favorites against the sacramento kings so go to bet dsi bet on the Mavs tonight because i think this is going to be a double digit win for the Mavs. maybe i'm being a little bold there maybe you can come back and let me know if i was wrong in this video but let's get into today's show starting off with evan fournier of the orlando magic look the dude's a sharp shooter we know he can create actually pretty well for his teammates and one of the underrated parts of his game is that he's got the inter international flair that would make his chemistry work really, really well with Luka Doncic. Now this year for the Magic, he's been great. I find it hard to believe that they would just let him go, but he's averaging 19.2 points per game, three assists, 2.6 rebounds, and there it is. 40% from three this year for the Magic. Evan Fournier is looking like a star from beyond the three-point arc, that is. Now for the Mavs, their three-point shooters aren't amazing but they do have some really really good ones so they're top five three-point shooters right now maxi kleba at 39.7 he's been off the charts if you guys know he does his little phone celebration he's been great seth curry he's been good too he's fallen off just a little bit so far this year he's had some ups and downs but he's still shooting 39.2 percent from three tim hardaway jr one of the most pleasant surprises is putting up a lot of threes but he's making a lot of threes at 39 percent delon wright of the mavs or excuse me, the point guard for the Mavs, 38.7% from three, but he doesn't take that many, so that's a little bit skewed. And then Dorian Finney-Smith, who's just been amazing from shooting the three ball in the corner at 38.6%. So Evan Fournier would come in right away and be immediately the Mavs' best three-point shooter, um, you know, percentage-wise here. So I think the Mavs would have to give up something to get him. I mean, this is still a good player on a bubble playoff team in the Orlando Magic. So here's a trade that I cooked up. This is one I would be comfortable with if I were Donnie Nelson and Mark Cuban calling up the Orlando Magic. I'd give up Justin Jackson, who is a good young player, but he's kind of fallen out of the rotation here lately for Dallas. Courtney Lee doesn't play at all, but his contract is expiring, so that's at least attractive. Golden State second round pick. We all know that's probably the most valuable asset the Mavs had, have leading up to the trade deadline. And then Utah's second round pick as well, which is a so-so 50s kind of pick. And then Evan Fournier to the Orlando Magic. And here's the important thing is he can play off the bench or he can start. Whether you want him starting over Tim Hardaway Jr., maybe you want him in a six-man role, Evan Fournier would be so good for this team. I just don't know if Dallas can pull it off and I don't know if the Magic are willing to give him up. So here's an important question. Who is the most likely, most realistic trade target for the Mavs this year? So who's a guy that you want, but he's also really realistic? Let me know in the comment section below. You're watching this on YouTube. You know the drill. You're going to get hit with an ad break. So scroll down, reply to our pinned comment. Let us know who the most realistic trade target is for the Mavs this year. Let's get into our next player here, DeMar DeRozan of the San Antonio Spurs. This is another name that Callie Kaplan threw out there for the Mavs. I'm kind of so-so on this idea because the guy can't shoot a three-pointer. He actually has shot more this year, surprisingly. But he's more of a mid-range, get-to-the-rim kind of guy for the Spurs. But he's putting up incredible numbers. He's shooting, or excuse me, he's scoring 22.4 points per game, averaging five assists and five boards, along with, of course, 54% from the field because all of his shots come from near or around 
the rim and then the mid-range game of course works well for DeRozan now the trade that I cooked up again another one that I'd be comfortable offering to the Spurs because look you can't give up nothing to get a 20 point per game score in a team that's still fighting for the playoffs in the San Antonio Spurs so the trade I'm going with here is Tim Hardaway Jr. Justin Jackson Golden State second and the 2025 first round pick which is the next available first round pick the Mavs can trade now that's a lot to give up for DeMar DeRozan I don't think I'm comfortable doing this, but this is the best trade idea, the most realistic trade idea I could come up with. So let's say it happens. Let's say the Mavs give up Tim Hardaway Jr., Justin Jackson, those two picks. This is kind of what the roster looks like. And if we're looking at the starting five on paper, it's pretty nice. You get Luka Doncic, DeMar DeRozan, of course, Dorian Finney-Smith. So right there, DeRozan and Finney-Smith, that's two pretty solid defenders. KP and Dwight Powell, who has just been off the charts lately. That game in Golden State last night, holy crap. Talk about perfection. That's what he's been doing. But let's ask the question, and then I'll give you my take on it. Do you want DeMar DeRozan in Dallas? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Pretty simple question here. I'm going to say no. I, I just don't like that he can't space the floor. I love that he would be another playmaker next to Luka. I love that he would bring a veteran presence. I love that he'd bring some playoff experience. But I just don't think a guy that can't shoot is the right answer for the Mavs, especially a guy who scores 20 points per game and none of those shots come from beyond the three-point arc. But maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comment section below. While you're at it, I'm going to ask you to subscribe here on Chat Sports because we're trying to get a Mavs-only channel. I want the Mavs-only channel, but the only way that's going to happen is if you guys subscribe. If the Mavs fans subscribe and tell us that they want it, then we can maybe make it happen. I've been appealing to the big wigs at Chat Sports about it, saying, hey, let's get this channel. The fans want it. And they say, ah, we don't have enough Mavs subscribers. Let's try to get that number up. And let's move in to our next player here, Marcus Morris of the New York Knicks. Look. I'm not sure, number one, that the Knicks will trade with us because of the whole Kristaps Porzingis deal, but also Marcus Morris has been really good for this New York Knicks team. He's scoring nearly 20 points per game and he's averaging five and a half rebounds. But the most impressive thing about Marcus Morris right now is the fact that the dude's shooting 46.9% from three. I mean, if he gets the ball beyond the three point arc, you better guard him because his three point shot has been absolutely incredible. That being said, those are some big numbers and I don't know if the Mavs are going to have enough pieces to pry Morris away from the Knicks. And also, is Marcus Morris even going to want to fit into a role here on Dallas? Or is he just going to want to chuck up shots when he gets here with the Mavs? But a guy who makes a little bit more sense, it might be more of a vi more viable trade option, could be Markeith Morris of the Detroit Pistons. Look, you put their numbers side by side, it's obvious who the better player is. It's Marcus Morris, who's averaging, again, 19 points per game and five and a half boards. But Markeith Morris... Does a lot of things that the Mavs do need. He shoots the ball 39.1% from three. He can guard threes or fours. He rebounds at a pretty decent rate. And he knows his role on the Pistons. Marcus Morris, on the other hand, goes into New York, shoots the ball as much as he wants, and doesn't really have a defined role. I'm afraid if he came to Dallas, he wouldn't know what his role is. Markeith, on the other hand, would. So... I still put together a trade package for Marcus Morris, and here's what it looks like. You got to give up a lot to get a lot in this scenario with Seth Curry, Justin Jackson, and again, that Golden State second round pick for Marcus Morris. Now, I wouldn't do that trade. A trade I would do, however, is I call up Detroit. I say, hey, look, we'll give you Justin Jackson and our Utah's second round pick for Markeith Morris. Straight up forward for forward swap, and we'll throw in the second round pick. Just give us Markeith Morris. I think this makes a lot of sense for Dallas because he's a good three-point shooter who can defend, again, threes or fours. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you'd rather have Marcus Morris on this team. Let me know in the comment section below. You got to type K for Markeith, type M for Marcus. Obviously, we can't do M for both because they're twins with the same first name uh, that starts with the same letter, blah, 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 blah. Markeith Morris or Marcus Morris, let me know in the comment section below. Before we get into my last target for the Mavs, Dallas Morning News' is last target for the Mavs, I want to remind you to go to BetDSI and use that promo code NBA120. Go bet on our Mavs tonight against the Sacramento Kings. They're three and a half point favorites. Again, I'm taking the Mavs by more than three and a half at least. Now, JJ Redick of the New Orleans Pelicans. I've talked about him, I think, one other time on this show, but his name has come up again. Look, a veteran presence that can shoot. He's been to the playoffs, hasn't ever missed the playoffs. He could really, really work well on this Dallas Maverick team. He's averaging 15.7 points per game, two assists, nearly three rebounds. And again, the 46.4% from three is just undefeated for J.J. Redick. Now, the Pelicans have been bad. He's been really good. 
So I think they're still going to have to give up a lot to get Redick on this Mavs team. So I'm throwing in Seth Curry again for Justin Jackson. Seth Curry, Justin Jackson, and that Golden State second round pick for Redick and the Pelicans second round pick. I don't know if the Pelicans say yes here. And I also don't know if the Mavs are willing to part ways with Seth Curry because he's been good for Dallas. He's had his ups and downs, but he's still been good and he can play either guard position while Redick is more penciled in to that shooting guard role. Who would you rather have for Dallas though? Type S for Seth, type J for JJ Redick. I'm going to stick with my guy, Seth Curry. I think he's younger. I know he's younger. I think he makes more sense for this Mavs team in particular, but JJ Redick would be a really, really nice piece. If I could have them both, we'd be living in a dream world. Mavs fans, thanks for watching today's episode on NBA Now from Chat Sports, and we'll be back next week.